Hey guys, welcome back to Global League Review. Here we have the 800 match. Um, so this is like only a slight truth. Um, it's only partially 800. Um, Foxes sent me the replay, I believe. And they're currently 750, but at the time they were 800. Mr. Cannon, longtime player. He's actually at uh, 1,000 here. So Mr. Cannon definitely... Uh, was at the time of playing and, you know, is currently um, higher rated by over 200 points. So, or about 200 points. And um, so, yeah, uh, we can ju just like, you know, let's keep that in mind as we go through this game. Um, so here we have, what is this, Tyrant Jaw or something like that? Jaw of Tyrants. Um, so we actually covered a game here last time um, in the last series. I think it was the 700 game. Um, and it was also in the Jess Mirror. So um, we get to see this game and, and how it compares to it. Um, I haven't seen that recently, so I don't exactly remember what happened other than I think there were a lot of mega tanks. And um, yeah, we saw a lot of heavy tanks. Um, and I think that this base got overrun. That's that's what I seem to remember, at least. Uh, so, yeah, I guess new game. We'll sort of see what happens here. So let's get on with it. Okay, so it looks like Mr. Cannon's first move is going back towards the airport. Um. That can be a good option. You can do a T copter. You can T copter your way to the center base. Maybe that's faster than walking there. Um, eh, probably not actually. But um, I do kind of like T copter here. It's high funds. You have extra money floating around at the beginning that you kind of want to spend in the air so that you can uh, spend more base builds on infantry to capture rather than vehicles to just sort of like find stuff to do. So it's like Foxes um, goes for the sort of port city um, chain. Um, doesn't actually, I mean, even if you were going for the port, it would have been more uh, optimal in some sense to move one tile south uh, for this infantry. So you could go either port or airport and um, have both options available to you. I, I, I don't know if it's, kind of depends on how you define optimal, but yeah, I guess if you, if you know you're going to the port no matter what, then it doesn't matter what you do. So that's all I mean by that. Um, okay, so, but yeah, Mr. Cannon, I think is making the right move by going airport first. Um, we'll see. Looks like he can't actually afford T-Copter immediately, though, which does look kind of weird. Um, that is pretty weird. So he can go airport first, but he can't afford a T-Copter. So that guy should probably go down. But then if this guy, I see. So you're going to have to skip a turn on the base if you want to capture this property first. Unless you want to base skip, which is a, not a bad option, actually. So yeah, let's see if Mr. Cannon goes crazy and base skips here. I think I would do that. Oh, he had 600 left over. Oh, okay. I was like, why does he have so little money? Okay. Good, good, good. All right. So he can he can do B-copter or T-copter. Both I like either. Either option looks good. But he, I really do want him to build it. Okay, good. T-copter, nice. Okay, so perfect. So you can move the T-copter down here, shuttle this infantry to the center, 
Okay, perfect. So yeah, Mr. Cannon had, knows what's going on. I just, I looked at the money he had left over and didn't know what turn it was. Okay, Fox is going for the black boat. Um, now the one thing about the black boat is it's, it's like, uh, it, it doesn't have anything to transport right away. So it's like, you could have built it a turn later and you would have been fine. Um, so that's probably the right thing to do. Um, it's better not to have stuff just waiting around doing nothing for a turn if you can help it. Um, and then also having four infantry over here and nobody capturing the airport doesn't seem right. Um, I would definitely, especially when it comes to high funds, um, more so than the other two, um, uh, the other two formats, um, capturing an airport is early is very useful. Um, even if you are Jess, um, like B copters are still fine units to use, uh, well, it's just versus just, so it's like her B copters are just like weak versus vehicles, but versus each other, it's like you don't notice the firepower difference that much. Um, bombers are also great things to use. T copters, as we already just figured out, are um, great units to build early. Um, so the Foxes does a tank here then. Um, yeah, like I, if I would have had to, if I, if I could change the order of these turns a little bit, I would have done tank here. This infantry, instead of going forward, goes back and then build a tank here, I think. Um, that's kind of how I would have liked to see that turn go in terms of builds. And then the next turn you can build a black boat if you're really set on that. Okay, Mr. Cannon. Um, looks like he actually opts to build tanks in a mirrored fashion rather than a matching fashion. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think we're quite at a level where like subtleties like that make a big difference in the game, but um, just a good thing to point out right now. Oh, I see. The black boat's moving up here to get that guy to the tower. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, if you want to build the black boat that early, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, drop. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that is the, a really fast way to go for this tower city combination. Okay, let me let me reset that. Kind of goofed up the replay there. Okay. Yeah, so Fox is going for the drop here, infantry here. It's gonna move the black boat up this way. Um so yeah, that looks fine. Um I mean a black boat does cost, you know, a bit more than a T-copter, but it's it high fun, so you can get away with small inefficiencies like that. Okay, looks like um, Mr. Cannon continuing with spamming out a fair number of tanks. Which looks like that makes a lot of sense. Okay, and then Foxus looks like they're going for a medium tank pretty darn soon. <sighs> Let's see, so instead of a medium tank, you would have added. Uh... So he has twenty k. Um, so you could do yeah, medium tank infantry infantry, or um. If you're thinking more along the lines of uh. Like you could do tank tank artillery, um, which also seems like a pretty decent option. Um, I don't have a strong opinion 
um, about early medium tanks and high funds. They seem totally fine. I guess the one issue with the medium tank build here is that um, you're not building an infantry here, and there's like some properties to capture, so you're delaying these captures a little bit. But not the biggest thing in the world, just something to think about. Okay, so Mr. Cannon actually has a pretty nice response. He can build um, tank, medium tank, infantry with zero gold left over, which is kind of like a nice little bonus because that means that it's like all the gold you have is out on the field instead of sitting in your pockets, not really doing much. Okay, it looks like this tank here got a little turned around. Um, so he starts going this way. Then he goes out front like this. And then this tank comes up. And then it's like he doesn't really know where to go. And then he goes down here. Um, it's just like a lot of inefficient uh, movement. It's like he didn't. Didn't really have a clear plan about where to go, um, but it's not always the worst thing in the world. Like, if it means that all four, all all five of these tanks are gonna go, like, meet together in this one spot, then it can be good. Um, it's just you kind of hope to see your tanks be a little more assertive, um, just so that they're not like, I don't know, wandering around, not really being active. Okay, so it looks like Mr. Cannon gets the first strike here. Um, not really sure what Fox is. I guess maybe he just missed that the movement tile could there was enough movement to get there. So yeah, let's see what Fox is does about that. Um, I would, every time I make a mistake like this, I'm like, can I trap something to make them, to find a silver lining, but I don't really see anything. There's not enough units really. Yep. Replay is being silly. <clears throat> ah. Okay. Okay, so it looks like this guy is actually going to die next turn because um, no tank covers the city, so this guy can go around back and finish him off. So it looks like a tactic that Fox has overlooked here. I mean, this is kind of like the classic issue you're going to run into playing like a much higher rated opponent. kind of doesn't matter who you are. Like you, you, you just find that they find little stuff like that. Exactly, the move I was talking about, yeah. Um, you, you, they're just going to find moves like that and it's just going to feel like not a lot of fun. So I don't know if there's like a strategy for beating that other than just like make that mistake less often. <laughs> Think more about your moves. <laughs> I don't know. I it, It's like if they're playing better, then they're going to make better moves. So, but yeah, I think move planner has actually kind of that's how I that's how you make better moves pretty much. It's like I mean you can you can work in your head, but going to the move planner and like move, moving your turn and then taking a close look at it and saying like, okay, if I was my opponent, what would I do now? And then Yeah, then make the move and then see where the issue is. Okay, so it looks like to respond to the B copter, we saw two anti-air, uh, which feels a little bit overkill. Um, I would have really liked to see one anti-air and a neo-tank, um, or one anti-air, infantry, infantry, bomber. Um, 
either of those seem like pretty good options, but the second anti-air is pretty passive and like just a little bit sad. Um, like there's just, it's giving up a really powerful unit you can use on the ground or to hit ground for something for like double covering air, which Jess is probably not going to rely heavily on anyways. And if things that ever get too crazy with, um, if your opponent ever goes too crazy building air units, you can always build a fighter. Um, and then that usually gives you, you can build fighter and then, you know, as many anti-air as you need to sort of catch up. But um, two anti-air responding to a B-copter feels like it's just a little bit too much anti-air. Because, yeah, instead of the medium tank, as I said, it could be a neo tank or a bomber. So both of those things um, perform better than medium tanks. So I guess the unfortunate thing that's it's looking like for Foxes here is that they've committed all of this base and most of this base to like 2v1 this base. I guess, I guess there's two bases here as well. Um, so it's just like they're committing all these forces here and they're not really getting a, an advantage. Okay, and it looks like Foxes kind of notices that and then switches... Um, up to the top here, which I totally agree with. I like that a lot. And then I also like this sacrifice. Um, even though it is an infantry, it's like getting 2k for it, so that's pretty good. Uh, this looks pretty undefended. Well, uh, we'll see what happens. It just... It looks a little bit sketchy. Um, and it looks like actually going for the anti-air, the, the second anti-air wasn't the worst thing because Mr. Cannon doubled down with a second B-copter. Um, but I don't, you can do B-copter, anti-air, anti-air versus two B-copters. That seems fine. But like the third anti-air, I still feel is uh, it's a bit overkill. You, you, you kind of feel like you need tanks up here. So I guess um, the way I've been, at least the way that I've been phrasing this game, it sounds like Foxes is kind of getting themselves in trouble here. Um, let me take a quick look at the stats to make sure that I'm not just picking on them. Um, so Mr. Cannon looks like they're up 4K in terms of unit value. So, so yeah. Oh, sorry, 40k? Yeah. So Mr. Cannon is like a build and a half, is, is like half a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a day's worth ahead in army value, um, up a, a good amount in unit count, um, up two property, or I guess one property, one flip that's in their favor, and like kind of boldly capturing here too, which kind of, it doesn't look like much fun. Um, and then this sort of like regroup to sort of maybe push north looks a little bit sad now because everything is pushed back. So it's going to take a while before you can find some uh, advantage to push in the, in the center here. So Fox is kind of looking like they're running out of options. Did I do that turn? Uh, no, yeah, I did. Okay. Okay, so Fox is doubling down on the idea that they're gonna use this two tank medium tank advantage to one to push up here, which I feel like is the right thing to do. So that's that's encouraging. Uh, 
Okay, using a tank though to take out this infantry seems uh doesn't seem like a good use of a tank in my opinion. Um it's just gonna die to three neo tank three medium tanks. So yeah, I would definitely use this tank to uh I just push him back here maybe and then like push up with the rest of your army. It's not gonna do anything just by itself here. Even though there is a medium tank here, it's just everything's not quite in range. <clears throat> yeah, this hurts a lot. And see, Mr. Cannon is playing this really well where he's he's realizing like he doesn't want to he doesn't want to fight this bigger army, so he's pulling back and back as his bigger army on the mirror side is really doing work. Um so yeah, maybe the lesson to be learned here is it's just like don't engage a losing fight, you know, um, unless there's a really weird re unless there's like a very odd reason for you to do that <clears throat> like the only reason i can think of right now is like if you want to engage a losing fight to charge a power that's going to win you the game that's that's the only exception i can think of right now Yeah, so now even at the end of Foxus's turn, where he's supposed to be ahead in value, he's two, he's twenty k behind in value. Uh, yeah, it's looking like a not a very good situation. Okay, well here's overdrive. Um let's see what um jet let's see what foxes can do with this. Ooh, this looks like a not a very exciting overdrive, unfortunately. Yeah, it's kind of smelling like a resign. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the all right. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, this is this is the hard one. Um, so yeah, I believe Fox has sent me this replay. Uh, was looking for things to um to improve on. So you know, we touched on things along the way, but let me just um really quickly that froze on me again. Okay, so let's see. Um, we we can start at the beginning just very briefly. Openings. I like Mr. Cannon's opening better because he gets the airport earlier, and in high funds, good early airport means you can pump your money that's just sitting in your bank into something that is um, can help you like capture properties faster with the T copter or with the B copter go and harass. <clears throat> Okay, all right, and then th with the B boat, um, I guess the B boat itself, I'm not. It, it, I think I prefer T copter, but B boat I wouldn't say is like, you know, at the eight hundred one thousand level, a B boat isn't gonna make a huge difference. 
Um, probably the biggest difference, biggest thing about your backside opening is just that the airport capture comes really, really late, um, which, I mean, it's, it's a property too. So, you know, you want to capture all your neutral properties quickly. So, I mean, I, I, as it's kind of like clean in theory, you know, to capture all three of these properties with one infantry. But I think the truth of the matter is that you can capture them a lot faster with two infantry, which is what Mr. Cannon does here. He, with this guy, he captures back, and this guy had captured this airport, and then he goes across the mountain and captures the port. So yeah, Mr. Cannon's opening, I think, is just a lot cleaner. Um, and it gives him more money, yes, but like you don't always notice that. But I think what you do notice is like the T-copter shuttling is, happens faster than the black boat shuttling, and it's also cheaper. And he captures his properties faster, so he gets more money. It probably adds up to like 10k worth of unit value eventually, which is like a tank and a half. <clears throat> um, then builds they made sense. He went towards medium tank, which is not my personal preference, but um, a totally reasonable thing to do. Um, so this tank here basically died doing very little damage so basically hung a tank right in this area um, which was pretty unfortunate because um, getting more power there would have helped um, yeah I think that's pretty accurate and then this this kind of push uh, it was making sense. Um, I, I kind of felt the same way, but then Mr. Cannon reinforced it really, really aggressively. Um, and then these two tanks up here were kind of doing nothing. So I think you, at the time, it made sense to me that you shuttled everybody back up towards here. Um, but I think you sort of left some stuff open I think that like you know that that kill right there looked pretty free, and then the next turn, uh, putting these three vehicles right here pretty much hangs them, um, like huge damage that you can't really do much about. So I think I would have really preferred to see. Let's see, maybe. Uh, it's a hard thing to figure out on the fly. I would say maybe this tank goes up here. This tank stays down, maybe infantry interrupt, and then regroup with like a bomber down here and then try to push with a, try to like stay alive with this group down here. Well, in the meantime, you take this entire group and then you shove it upwards and uh, take back some cities. Um, just kind of like play in his face and then like maybe damage race, I guess. Um, and then after that, I think after this move here, you're just too far down in value to really get back in the game. I mean, down this far against Mr. Cannon, I don't think that like really anyone can bring it back. He's, he's a solid player. He knows how to not you know, fumble winning games. So once once all of this damage happened, once you lost most of this, it looked pretty pretty much out of control. So yeah, good game. Um definitely like good on you for, you know, sharing a tough loss because, you know, it never feels good to lose versus somebody that's like you know, a good 200 points above you. So yeah, definitely thanks for sending this in and uh, yeah, we'll do the 900 next.